What's the connection between food poisoning events and SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Today we are diving into that question and if you are one of the many patients that I see here at the Byron Herbless Clinic who can point to a very significant food poisoning event as there never been well since moment. That moment where digestion was fine beforehand, they had this food poisoning event, digestive symptoms have been kind of chronic since then, then this will be really significant for you. We see food poisoning as a strong driver of SIBO, but the question for me is always why? We're gonna dive into that now. So before we do jump in, remember this is not medical advice. Speak to your prescribing practitioner first before bringing anything in. And the other really big piece here is that we are just on the cutting edge of science here. We've got some animal studies showing this kind of causal link between food poisoning and SIBO, that bacterial buildup in the small bowel, leading to things like bloating and distension, gas, flatulence, burping, abdominal pain, food intolerances, changes in bowel movements, diarrhea or constipation or both. And the really big piece here, we're starting to tease it out. We've got animal studies. We're just starting to get human studies, but we're looking at food poisoning and food poisoning bugs. You know, they're secreting these toxins and the immune system is getting a little bit confused and it's starting to target the digestive tract leads to a chronic breakdown in the ability to sweep the digestive tract free and clear and then you wind up with the bacterial overgrowth. And this is a really, really classic example of where just killing the bugs is not going to do it. And I see a lot of this approach in SIBO treatments, which is good. I mean, it makes sense, right? It's a bacterial overgrowth. You kill the bugs, you get better. And that might work for maybe a third of patients. But for those two thirds of patients, it's about finding that root cause. Is it low stomach acid? Is it a motility issue? Was it this previous exposure to food poisoning? You know, what's going on leading to this development of this overgrowth in the small bowel? It's kind of more of a symptom. I mean, it's a condition too, but it's kind of a symptom. The body shouldn't be letting bacteria overgrow in that area. And why is it doing that? That's how you get most people better. So finding out what your root cause for SIBO is, treating that at the same time reducing those bugs, that's how we get patients over the finish line here in the Byron Herbalist Clinic. Acute food poisoning is such a significant event for a certain person and up to 10% of people who have experienced acute food poisoning will go on to develop chronic and lasting digestive symptoms, IBS-like symptoms, and that's such a significant number that it even has its subcategory of irritable bowel syndrome called post-infectious IBS. So far it comes down to the toxins that are secreted by these bacterial food poisoning bugs. And I'm theorizing, I think that the more that we learn about this, the more toxins we're gonna find that do similar things, but all of the literature is revolving around this one specific bacterial toxin called cytolethal distending toxin B. Common food poisoning bugs, Campylobacter, Shigella, E. coli, Salmonella, they all secrete cytolethal distending toxin B. And to keep it simple, this is where it gets very complicated in immunology, it gets as complicated as any other pathophysiology, you know, it gets, gets deep. <laughs> but to keep it simple, the immune system recognizes this food poisoning bug and the cytolethal distending toxin B toxin recognizes it as a problem and it mounts an immune response and generates antibodies against that toxin. Everything's working fine. This totally makes sense. This is all like normal immune function. 
And for a subset of patients where that happens, there can be a cross-firing or a misfiring of the immune system, molecular mimicry. The immune system recognizes the toxin, mounts an immune response, and then sees something in the body, you know, self-tissue, your own body, and starts mounting antibodies against that as well. And the focus of this misfiring is an adhesion protein called vinculin in the digestive tract that helps regulate motility so you get a breakdown in motility here so a lot of this work started off in animals that's how we kind of prove and kind of develop and fine-tune our um, you know different theories and we saw that uh, rats that were infected with wild type Campylobacter that secreted the toxin wound up developing SIBO and rats that were infected with a Campylobacter that had been mucked with so it didn't secrete the toxin didn't wind up developing SIBO at the same significant levels. So far we've got two pieces. We've got the bacterial food poisoning leading to the immune system misfiring and targeting the digestive tract and its ability to you know, sweep things free and clear. And the third piece is that we've got evidence in the science that with poor motility, particularly this phase three interdigestive motor activity can lead to SIBO, right? So that's the last piece right there, piecing it all together, food poisoning, shutting down motility, leading to SIBO. So what do we do with this information for you? You know, I assume because you've made it this far in the uh, video that you or someone that you know is dealing with digestive health issues that haven't really respond to past treatment. So we know you have an issue, that's step number one. Step number two is to determine whether it is SIBO positive or not. You can learn about my recommendations with SIBO testing here. I like lactulose breath testing as a baseline and I like following it up with a fructose breath test if we have to, just to be sure whether it's SIBO positive or not. And the next step would be to determine whether gut motility is your root cause. There's so many root causes for SIBO. We're trying to find out what your root cause driver is for the SIBO that we now know you have. And my favorite way to do that would be to track your gut transit time. How long does things take to track from your mouth all the way through the digestive tract to the toilet bowl. And you can check out a past video on how to do that. It's super simple, easy to do, and such, such valuable data. Now, if we know you have digestive issues, now we know you're SIBO positive, and now we know that you have slow motility, things are taking time, you know, two, three, four days, sometimes seven days, sometimes 14 days to track through the digestive tract. We know that motility is at least a part of your root cause for SIBO and needs to be part of that active treatment. So I've done a whole video on different herbal prokinetics, you know, herbs that stimulate stimulate motility and movement through the digestive tract. You can check that out here. I can just tell you clinical experience. We use gallons of these herbs, immature bitter orange, ginger, globe artichoke, magnolia bark, turkey rhubarb, iberagast. I mean, there's so many different herbal prokinetics that we can work with. So that's step number one. And at the moment, I am using iberagast as a gem gentle prokinetic, we start people off there, but for patients that are really deep in their symptoms, they've got very slow motility, I'm ramping it up to some of my stronger favorite prokinetic herbs at the moment, that'll change. But currently my favorite ones is very high dose ginger as a tincture. We use herbal tinctures for most of our patients here. And the other really big one there is jush or immature bitter orange. And I am getting such good results with this one. There are other ones, magnolia bark, turkey rhubarb, but with immature bitter orange, I'm gonna be doing a whole separate video on that. So stay tuned for that one. So if you have SIBO, we have to find those root causes, check and see if motility 
that is an issue. You can do these kind of tests for antibodies. You can test for that cytolethal distending toxin B antibody. And you can also test for the antibody against vinculin in your digestive tract to see if that's your root cause. I've never ordered it. They're extremely expensive. They're kind of hard to get your hands on here in Australia. And it kind of tells us what we can figure out already. If you're a patient that's stuck in it, you've had SIBO forever, you can't get over it, you have slow motility, it might be worth the investment for you. I'm not sure. If you got something out of this, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are looking for help with your digestive symptoms, you live in Australia or New Zealand, then reach out to the clinic. There will be a link in the description below.